Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. I'm going to read uh, more of our article called Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Culture Model. I'm going to read where I took off last night. The last sentence I read was, As a result, the IAEA model has become widely used in the nuclear industry as the main guide to safety culture. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Despite the relevance of the IE IAEA model to nuclear safety outcomes, its validity has never been empirically tested. Did you hear that? Despite the relevance of the IAEA model to nuclear safety outcomes, its validity has never been empirically tested. This will be the aim of the present study and our main contribution to the advancement of safety in the nuclear industry. In order to achieve this goal, three studies are presented. The first study tests the face validity of the model on the basis of opinions of a sample of non-experts in organizational behavior with no previous experience in the nuclear industry. In the second study, a sample of experts in organizational behavior is used to test the content validity of the model. And finally, the third study examines the factorial structure of a questionnaire based on the model in a sample of workers in a Spanish nuclear power plant, which they deem NPP. 1.1 Conceptualization of Safety Culture Safety culture presents a great diversity of meanings and connotations due to the broad dimensionality of the concept. It has sometimes been explained in the form of intuitive slogans, i.e., do the right thing even when nobody is watching, or the way we do things around here. Nevertheless, the, under nevertheless, the understanding, assessment, and improvement of the safety culture have typically been based on the way it has been formally defined. Huh. Safety culture has been defined by the IAEA in 1991 as that assembly of characteristics and attitudes in organizations and individuals which establishes that as an overriding priority Nuclear plant safety issues receive the attention warranted by their significance. Hmm. So if it's not significant, they don't have to look at it. That's what that means. This was the first definition of safety culture and one of the most influential, uh, influential in the field. The IA definition was carefully composed to to emphasize that safety culture is attitudinal as well as structural, relates to both organizations and individuals. That's IAEA 1991, page 1. Therefore, the IAEA 1991 highlights two general components of safety culture. The quote, the first is the necessary framework within an organization and is the responsibility of the management hierarchy. The second is the attitude of the staff at all levels in responding to and benefiting from the framework. Unquote. Page 5. The definition of safety culture of the IAEA has stimulated researchers' interest in the topic. But, not, but it is not exempt from criticism. Wilpert, in 1991, referred to the, to the, quote, characteristics term in the definition as being rather vague. On the other hand, he warned that this definition leaves out safety-related behavior, huh. which is important because, as he reminds us, attitudes and actions do not always correlate strongly. In our view, another critical issue is that the cultures are, quote, shared, unquote, by individuals and groups pertaining to the same country, society, organization, etc. Later, the IAEA 1998 adds that the, quote, characteristics, unquote, and 
quote, attitudes, unquote, referred to in its definition should be commonly held addressing the shared issue and relatively stable. Therefore, in an effort to extend its own definition to other contents, the IAEA clarifies that, quote, safety culture is also an amalgamation of values, standards, morals, and norms of acceptable behavior. Therefore, safety culture has to be inherent in the thoughts and actions of all the individuals at every level in the organization, unquote. Page four. Man, I have to fight back the cussing. Oh my God. Back to the story here. The theoretical and practical development of safety culture has been closely related to the development of the term safety climate, quote unquote, safety climate. In this context, it is important to mention that the theoretical distinction between these two constructs, while safety culture is believed to encompass stable, shared, basic assumptions, beliefs, values, and norms regarding safety at work, safety climate is presented as shared perceptions of safety at any given point in time. So like the safety climate in Richland is fine. It's perfectly fine there. Specifically, safety climate generally includes day-to-day -day perceptions towards the work environment. Exactly. Working practices, organization policies, and management. That comes from Yule, 2003. Safety climate is viewed as a manifestation or a, quote, snapshot, unquote, of safety culture. Wow. Finn et al. in 2000. It is more transient and less stable and reflects somewhat the current state of the underlying safety culture. Merns et al. 2001-2003. Because of this, Many authors rely on climate studies to capture the state of HRO safety culture, and these terms have often been used interchangeably. I want to go back and see what HRO is. I remember they said that. Sorry, guys, but I know you said what an HRO was. HRO. Oh, highly reliable organization. Let me underline it so in case I have to remember it again. High reliability organization. What the? Did they just say to us? Okay, let's read that again. Because of this, many authors rely on climate studies to capture the state of highly reliable organization safety culture. And these terms have often been used interchangeably. Although it is important to define each construct precisely and use them accordingly. So do you get what's happened here? Safety culture is completely different. Completely different than the safety climate. They use this specifically. They, these Man, these people are evil. Evil, evil. I do not know how they can, like, live with themselves. Wow. I Honestly, this does make me wish there was a hell. 1.2. Dimensions of safety culture. Safety culture comprises a variety of contents that are in, is indistinctively called indicators, principles, traits, characteristics, components, dimensions, attributes or a combination of these, like at the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations, IMPO, and the World Association of Nuclear Operators, refer to principles, the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, to indicators, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, to components, and the IAEA to characteristics. Bastards. Following the psychometric terminology, and reflecting the assumed multidimensional nature of safety culture, 
We will use the term dimension when referring to each of these contents. When a dimension is composed of smaller subcontents, these will be referred as attributes of that specific dimension. Okay, let's read that again. Following the psychometric terminology in reflecting the assumed multidimensional nature of safety culture, we will use the term dimension when referring to each of these contents. Contents of safety culture, the dimension of safety culture. When a dimension is composed of a smaller subcontents, these will be referred to as attributes of that specific dimension of the safety culture. The existing conceptualizations, models, and assessment tools of safety culture reflect a lack of consensus of the dimensions that comprise the safety culture construct. Blah, blah, blah. Let's read that again. The existing conceptualizations, models, and assessment tools for safety culture reflect a lack of consensus on the dimensions that comprise the safety culture construct. Wow, so they don't agree on any of it. There is an overlap between the identified dimensions as well as a lack of conceptual clarity. Well, that's not hard. Those guys are dense. The dimensionality of safety culture, as reported by Gultamund in 2000, ranges from 2 to 19 dimensions, with little coincidence of their labels. The labels given to these dimensions vary considerably from author to author, even when they try to refer to the same safety culture contents. Several reasons lie behind the existing multitude of safety culture dimensions and the lack of agreement between them. For instance, the numerous definitions of safety culture, which show little consensus about the operation, oper, oper, operationalization of the construct. That's a long word. Oper, operationalization. The numerous de de definitions of safety culture, which show little consensus about the operationalization of the construct. That probably could have been translated better. The variety of tutors, professional, and see, that's what I was going to go to school to do, is translate Spanish. But now, no. Now it's to stop the Price-Anderson Act. The variety of authors, professional, and academic backgrounds, ergo, psychology, sociology, engineering, economics, etc., their idiosyncratic writing styles and paradigms, their work is influenced by, i.e., uh, constructivism, positivism, relativism, etc. Wow. And probably they're leaving out, like, who sponsored them. The use of empirical, atheoretical approaches to identify the dimensions of safety culture, ergo the factor analysis, which is called the FA, or the principal component analysis, PCA, etc., without the guidance of solid theoretical models, leaves researchers considerable freedom to label their own dimensions. For a detailed explanation of this point, the reader is directed to Guldenmund in 2000. Different, and then this is another one, different industries, ergo, nuclear, petrochemical, aviation, mining, construction, etc., often address distinct organizational and management aspects having an impact on safety outcomes. So they didn't actually talk about the purchasing of science in this. Okay. The label of dimensions requires special caution. As quite often labels have their own beyond what the items making making up these dimensions operationally measure. This is especially true when assessment tools are used by practitioners. If a label does not adequately capture and summarize the content of its corresponding attributes, it can be confusing and misleading in practice. A number of safety culture reviews have attempted to identify the commonly accepted dimensions of safety culture, see Table 1. According to Sorensen 2000, most investigators agree that the dimensions of safety culture are good organizational communication, good organizational learning, senior management commitment to safety, 
and a working environment that rewards identifying safety issues. He also noted that some investigations have included dimension related to management and organizational factors, such as a participative management leadership style. That's Wegman et al. in 2004, concluded in their review that safety culture includes five dimensions, organizational commitment, management involvement, employee empowerment, reward system, and reporting systems. The health and safety executive in 2005, after reviewing the literature re surrounding safety culture, identified the following five dimensions, leadership, two-way communication, employee involvement, learning culture, and attitudes towards blame, a just culture. Attitudes towards blame, in parentheses, a just culture, unquote. That's weird. Meanwhile, Chaudhry et al. in 2007, take the view that safety culture comprises dimensions, leadership safety values and actions, problem identification and resolution, personal accountability, work processes, continuous learning, environment for raising concerns, effective communication, respectful work environment, and a questioning attitude. Now the IAEA 2006A has identified five main safety culture dimensions based on research findings. Lessons learned regarding the root causes of organizational failures. Ugh, let me read this again. The IAEA has identified five main safety culture dimensions based on, quote, research findings, lessons learned regarding the root cause of organizational failures in safety management and safety culture, and the international collaboration of safety experts under the auspices of the IAEA, page 35. The dimensions proposed by the IAEA are, safety is a clearly recognized value. Leadership for safety is clear. Accountability for safety is clear. Safety is integrated into all activities, and safety is learning driven. Let's see how much time we have here. I'm going to stop. I can't read the clock. Let's see. Ooh, I've been at it 17 minutes. Well, this is interesting. They kind of give a summation. I don't know if you can see that. So they give a summation of the different safety values. You see that? I'm not going to read it all. It kind of goes over everything they said. <coughs> Holy crap. I skipped. I feel like that dumbass. Ugh. There was a guy when I did theater when I was younger. He played Petruchio in Taming of the Shrew. I swear to God he could not keep his soliloquy straight. He mixed them up. He'd say the thing he was supposed to say in the first half and the second well, folks, I just missed this, and so I'm not going to reread it. I stopped here. No, maybe I read it. I don't know. You can tell I'm sick because I can't really think right now. So tomorrow I'm going to do my secret, my secret remedy, which if you know me, you know what I'm going to do tomorrow and the next day, and then I'll be well again. Man, put your courage feet on. This is shocking. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm making an effort to read better than I used to, but uh, it's really important that we understand what's out there. It's worse than we could have ever imagined. So put your courage feet on, folks, because we're it. <laughs> Ciao.